What is up, YouTube? Yoda here. Uh, bringing you guys a nice little walkthrough series. This is going to be the start of it, of course. Episode 1. Um, pretty much just to take new players to the game. Uh, to help you guys out, you know, on the on the journey through the lands between. Um, the game is very overwhelming. This is going to be the point of this series is to streamline just a nice little route for you guys. I have over 300 hours played. And I've done multiple playthroughs. So this guide is pretty much just going to be the accumulation of uh, of all the things I've learned. Also, I'm going to give uh, credit where credit's due. Um, shout out to the entire Souls Light community for posting things online. Um, all the YouTubers that I put all the guides out. Um, you know, people that have been updating community maps for items around the world um, has been a big help and a giant resource. Uh, for me personally in order to um, essentially create what I'm about to show you guys so yeah so shout out to them and <clears throat> yeah let's get into it um, so right off the rip we have all of our starter classes um, for the sake of time I'm pretty much just gonna be straight up going I'll tell you guys straight up right now right off the rip we're going for a dual katana build um, we're gonna be rocking the samurai right off the Right off the bat, um, for those that are new players, pretty much all these classes are either going to be oriented towards what you want to do in the beginning of the game. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so what you want to do at the beginning of the game, um, uh, stat-wise, uh, so just to uh, do a brief, 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 brief overview. Whoops. Not back. Uh, let's see, we'll go to, oh, show stats, okay, so, so here you can see all the, uh, all the base stats, pretty much your starter class really does not matter, um, just, it's kind of like whatever weapons you want to use right off the rip, but like I said, for the sake of time and for the sake of this run, and specifically how I'm catering this run, uh, to get you into essentially mid to late game as fast as possible. Um, is going to be the samurai. So yeah, we're going to start with this bad boy. I'm just going to name him you to walk through. We don't really care about anything that's going on. You can customize all this stuff if you really want to. Um... One thing that we are going to do, we actually have a profile, low custom profile we saved. So we're just going to do that. All right, but feel free to go in and customize whatever you want. Have fun with it. For our keepsake, we are going to go with a stone sword key. I'll briefly go over these. Uh, you get so many golden seeds. These don't matter. This is to increase how many flasks you have. Um, let me see, medallion doesn't matter, I mean, imp ashes we just get later, we get all this stuff really, really early, pretty much, we're just gonna just take my word for it, we're gonna go with the stone sword key, for the sake of confusion, this is gonna open up doors around the map that are gonna lead us to special items, so, it's always good having these. Um... And yeah, so let's get started. I'm going to do these episodes in 30 minute segments. <laughs> 30 minute segments. So that way it's not as overwhelming for you guys. Be easy enough just to pause the videos. I'm going to skip past all the cutscenes. If you guys are following along. Right on the same pace, I would suggest pausing this video and watching those cutscenes because they are epic. So we're going to start out getting an emote. We're going to run over here to where this maiden is. And pick up the tarnished wizard finger. And we are going to run out of this bad boy. Open up the church. We're going to go to the left down these stairs. Sorry if I'm clearing my throat a lot and 
taking little breaks. I'm drinking coffee right now. It is the morning for me, and I'm just trying to wake up. So pretty much here in this first room, we're going to have a tutorial boss right away. If you can kill him, good. If not, it does not matter. Essentially, for the sake of time, I would just straight up die from him. You can get back to this zone later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. He does drop some items that are pretty decent. I think for the average player, he's going to be very, very difficult. Then we are going to get our flask, and we're going to be over here in this cave. So now there is a door to the left, but if you jump down here, this is a tutorial cave, and you go through it, it's pretty much going to teach you all the things in the game. Um, you know, it's going to tell you your key binds, you know, what to click, when to do it. Um, so, yeah, so actually, you know, we'll we'll go do it. We will go do it. This first episode is pretty much just going to be me teaching you the bare bones of things right off the rip. So this is a grace or a bonfire, whatever you like to call it. These are going to be your respawn points and resting points if you spend a flask. So let's see, if I drink a flask and if I sit at this bad boy, exit, you see I have three flasks again. This is going to automatically replenish your flask. Very good, very convenient. Run through. You can assassinate enemies in this game. Okay, just doesn't want to assassinate. Very important that you lock on to enemies. I am on mouse and keyboard, so I'm not gonna go over what to like, like what buttons to click. Just because um, majority of you guys are probably gonna be on controller, and I don't know what any of the controller settings are. So now in this game, you do have light attacks. We do have heavy attacks. So now for shield enemies, it's definitely good. To use heavy attacks in order to break their stance, as you see the shield got knocked away from them. I was able to actually do damage to them. Jump attacks are very nice as well. Pretty much you can do a jump attack, you can do a jump heavy attack. Let me do a jump heavy. So actually right there you can see that I actually ran out of stamina so I couldn't swing in a little bit of a delay. And if you break someone's guard you actually go up and you just click attack real quick, form an execute. Here. There's also parrying in this game. Very important to lock on to, to enemies as well. Actually, we can show the assassination here. Pretty much whenever you're fighting something, try to stay as locked on as possible. You should get a little bit more advanced with the controls. You'll know when to unlock and when to lock and all that good stuff. Here, that's a stake of Marika. The stake of Marikas are pretty much going to be a majority of boss encounters. Now, if you do die in a boss encounter, it will give you an option, say Last Grace Site or Stake of Marika. Go to the Stake of Marika. You'll come back with full reserves and everything, flask and all. So here. I'm trying to parry this guy. He's not doing a very good job. There we go. Parry him real quick. As you see, parrying point execute does a massive amount of damage.
like I said, you're gonna have to go into your keybinds and figure out what your controls are. Uh, for me, personally, on mouse and keyboard, I have pretty much remapped everything, besides like directional controls to move. So I do not want to be like, hey, this is what this is this does, and this is what this does. And you guys are like, oh, that's definitely not what that does. All right, so another grace here. Make sure that you always pick up the graces. Very important. This is our. This is where you use stone sword keys. Are these imp? These uh, stone imp statues. It'll be a fog wall right here. As you can see, you can't go through it if you use a stone sword key on this. It will drop. <clears throat> it will drop these walls. Pick that up. This is a finger sever and tarnished furled finger. This is for multiplayer. Take this elevator up. And we're gonna go out this door. And we are in limb grave, and then there's gonna be a grace right in front of us. Now, before you talk to this guy real quick, we're actually gonna go pick this up real fast. Small golden effigy. Also another multiplayer item. You're going to talk to Vary. Of course you. He's pretty much just going to say you don't have any maidens. You want to listen to his dialogue, you can. I'm going to skip past it, though. But exhaust his dialogue. Whenever you guys come across NPCs and they give you prompts, just make sure you exhaust their dialogue. So his dialogue is exhausted. And from here... You're gonna make our way to that church. There is a boss, that is a tree sentinel right there. You don't wanna mess with him. That boss right there to the right, right there above my head. We're gonna stick to the path on the left as to not aggro him, because he will mess us up right now. So we're gonna come across here, some glowing rune fragments. We'll just pick those up for the sake of picking them up. All around the map, there's going to be items that you can pick up for crafting in the future. I'm not a very I've spent probably a grand total of five minutes of my three hours, of my 300 hours of gameplay. I've probably spent a grand total of five minutes crafting. So, if you guys are wanting to know how to like really in-depth craft, You're I would suggest tarnished, looking up a guide. But I can also We're going to talk. So these guys around fires that you see, my throat. they won't always look like this, but they always will usually be around fire and have like a little donkey. These are going to be your merchants. Very important to talk to them. I'm gonna sell a whole assortment of things. Um, specifically from this first merchant, we're gonna to wanna to buy a crafting kit for sure. Um, the cookbooks are very important as well. This is for crafting. So if we go over here, click on this, then we go to mid, to change the mid so we can look and see exactly what this sells or exactly what this makes. You can see at the bottom it says, acquire the knowledge to craft the following, holy water pot and roped holy water pot. So a holy water pot is pretty much you just throw a pot at something. It's like throwing like a grenade in a game, right? And then a roped holy water pot is going to be, I think it just goes a farther distance. I'm pretty sure. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, Let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, we don't need anything from here. Also, we can't really buy anything. Torches is a nice little light source, but we're going to grab a lantern later on, so don't even worry about this. I would just get the crafting kit right off the rip. Goodbye. No. And then from here, oh, actually... All right, and then when you go to your menu, so equipment in order to equip things to your basic inventory, then item crafting right below that, this is how you actually craft things. So you can see, you can be like, oh, like I wanna make some rainbow stones. These will throw stones on the ground that glow. Um, you can see that we use rune fragments to make these. Uh, bone darts, these are kind of useful in the beginning. Kill animals, you get little thin beast bones. Um, then you just have some little darts that you can throw out. Um, this is actually kind of useful in the beginning catacombs that we're going to do. Um, and yeah. Also, and then this is just going to your basic inventory so you can kind of go through and see exactly what you have. And yeah, so without spending too much time on that, we're gonna go grab this item on the anvil. It's gonna be a smithing stone one. Very important to upgrade our weapons. As you see in this playthrough, I pretty much hyper focus on upgrading the, our weapons um, right off the rip. 
because it is very important for power scaling. And essentially, I think in either two or three episodes, we are going to have big weapons. They're going to be like, we're going to have like two plus 14 or plus 13 weapons. And that's pretty much going to get you through a vast chunk of the game. And, and yeah. So we're going to run through here. We're pretty much going to make our way to right here. If you see on the map. If you ever see these icons on the map in a gray zone, this is where maps are going to be. These pillar little things. So we'll mark that as well. So we're running through here. You're going to find enemies out in the world. You can kill them if you want. Sometimes they drop items. Sometimes they don't. Kill animals. They'll drop things. So you see thin beast bones. Like we saw with the bone darts for crafting. So making our way over here. We're going to hug the left. We're going to go to this gray site right here. Where we have our first beacon mark. And we're going to get our mount for the game. A little horsey torrent. So we're going to find this gray site. Then we're going to sit down at it. And... Uh, I don't even know what you want to call her. She's like our guide throughout the throughout the game. She starts our, our campaign to become the Elden Lord. Greetings. So we'll just Traveler. skip past this. Have you heard of the they serve but you She pretty much just tells you the lore of the game and exactly what's going on in terms of then it's settled. You know. Summon Just things that you run into, you're like, what is this? Here we go. To turn she told me about this. Ah, I bequeath. So she's going to give you the spectral steed whistle. It's going to be able to summon your mount. Treat him with it's going to skip past all this. Um, so when you're resting on Bonfire 2, you'll see that you can pass time. You can level up. You have your flask. When you go into flask... We can allocate our flask. We're not going to use any mana right now, so we're actually just going to go straight up 4 into our health pots. Red is health. Blue. <clears throat> it's going to be our FP, our focus points, or I just call it mana. So, if you ever hear me just say, you know, just our mana pods, this is what I mean. But for now, we're going to go all into health. We're going to confirm. <sighs> we started with a stone sword key. So essentially, if you want to add a charge to your flask, when you go around the map, you're going to find things called golden seeds and sacred tears. Sacred tears is going to increase the amount of health or mana that your flask actually give you and golden seeds are going to increase the charges of flasks that you hold. So right now we're holding four flasks total. As you get more golden seeds, you will be able to go up more and more with the total flask that you have. So if you add a charge of flask, you can see it says use one golden seed to increase your number of flasks. If you just say yes, say not enough golden seeds, that just means you have golden seeds in your inventory. Increase your amount of replenish, use a sacred tier to increase the amount of H HP and FP replenished by your flask. You know, even if you say yes, nothing bad happens, you know, it just says, oh, no, you don't have any in your inventory. You're like, all right. And then, yeah. So we're going to rock out of there. A uh, very important note in the beginning of the game. Actually, what up? We're actually going to do this on the next gray site. So when you talk to her, as you see, when we came in here, it was day. When we talk to her, she gives us the spectral steed. All of a sudden, it's nighttime. And you're like, what the hell is going on? This is what we're going to do. We're going to actually go back to our map. We're going to go down here to the Church of Ella. This is the first place we ran to for the merchandise. We're going to travel right there. This way, tarnished. Now, as soon as you zone in, have a word. you're going to see a witch right in front of you. You want to talk to her. Very important. I am the witch. I'd heard Exhaust her dialogue. Talk, I I call forth. You can say, I can call the spectral seed. <sighs> I was in Tritorrents. She's going to give you a spirit calling bell and then lone wolf ashes is very important. Uh, this is used <clears throat> so that way you can actually use summons in the game. This is going to be an integral part of our gameplay. So it is very important that you do this right off the rip. It is a bell for summon them the spirits when now it is that. Exhaust our dialogue. I doubt we shall. How long will it be for the time? She's going to disappear. So I know her dialogue is exhausted. And from here, we're going to go into our equipment. We are going to go down. And we are going to equip our lone wolf ashes. 
and real quick. Okay, so we don't have any talismans. And cool, 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 cool. So pretty much, let's see, is it still? We're going to rest at this gray site. Uh, for the beginning of the game, it is very important that you go to a grave site, you go to pass time, and then always wait until early morning. Or until morning, sorry. As you can see, our time dial is going to change there at the bottom right. And then when we come back out of our grave site, it will be morning time. Because at night time, it's a little bit more dangerous. Uh, it's not the biggest deal. Sorry, go back to equipment and actually make sure you equip your spectral steed. Very important to have that. Scroll down to it, or whatever your interact button is for that. And then use it. You'll be able to summon your horse. Now from here, let me just check my notes real quick. Um, so we're going to follow a pretty general route. This is a very nice route just to get some stuff going on. We're actually going to go get the map real quick. We're not going to mess around in these ruins, but we're going to get the map and then we are going to go on a very essentially linear path just to get some, um, get some, what are called golden ruins that you can use in order to gain ruins. We're going to get a whole bunch of those, we're going to get a whole bunch of smithing stones and some items as well. Let me see what this is actually. Okay, those are just throwing knives. You can grab this if you want to. Not necessary though. We're just gonna run past here. We're just gonna stay on our horse, and you can pick up items while you're on your horse. I suggest doing this. Run here. We're gonna go to this stone right here. Spam that. Pick up the map. Now from here, we're gonna go up through the gate. There's gonna be a troll above us, so kinda stay off the road. We're going to hug the left side. Jump over these barricades. Past all these barricades. going up the road and we're eventually we're gonna find another grace we're gonna hug the right there's a golden seed right here bam grab that bad boy we're gonna hug the right still there's going to be a wolf ambush in the road so we want to stay off the road so go up here do a little double jump you can double jump with your horse and then we're gonna get off our horse and discover this great site now from this great site we're going to run into the shack there's going to be a girl we're going to exhaust the dialogue with her. She's going to give you an email. Keep talking to her. She will give you a little jellyfish. That is also a spirit summon. Alright, so we have exhausted her dialogue. And we will cruise out of here. And then that's a stone sword key right there. Make sure to pick that up. Now, from here, we are actually going to run down here real quick. So, as you can see, when we found the map and we kind of come back into our map, we are going to see stuff actually pop up. So, right here, we're going to go right there. And then I think there's something on this thing. Go grab this stuff real quick so that way we kind of just get this out of the way we're not really going to come back to this zone until later uh, when we can actually fight a little mini boss we are going to get more power from first because if we try to fight him now we are going to get absolutely clapped so we're pretty much going to stay on the right side of this cliff <clears throat> i'm going to jump up here jump up again as you make your way up you're gonna see like a whole bunch of jellyfish, little grave sites. I'm just gonna run into here. I'm just gonna pick up a few items. Let's see, the smithing stone. I don't think there's anything over here. I'm just gonna double check. I wrote down a whole bunch of stuff, but sometimes, sometimes you miss things. So now we're gonna go towards our beacon that we put right off the rip. <laughs> We're just going to run straight across. Make sure you don't go back down the cliff because you want to stay up top in order to find these things. I don't think it's over here. No, it's back this way. It's, it's on the jellyfish. So we're going to get a little bit grease. I got stuck there. And then there's one right here. And then we're going to 
can't get these spirit summons. The Godric soldier ashes, and then we're gonna run away from these bad boys. And if you saw that right there, whoops. There'll be like little glowing skulls on the ground. If you actually run over them with your horse, it will break them and just spam your interact button when you run over them and you'll pick, you should pick up a little golden ruin. And then from there, okay, we're out of combat, so we're actually, oh, sorry, we're actually gonna go down here real quick. You can see a little ruin right there. And then I think on the ruin is something. Okay, we get a little emote. Now we'll just pick up some. Because why not? And then from here, we're going to go back. We're going to take off these beacons real quick. We're just going to go back to the Storm Hill Shack. Fast travel there. <clears throat> and now from here, we are going to be running a little route. We get some stuff here. We get some stuff down here, I believe. And then over here as well. So to go to our first marker, you can see going northeast, there's going to be a troll in the distance. We're not going to fight him. But what we are going to do, jump up on this cliffside, kind of hold the edge, make sure you don't fall off. It's going to aggro, but don't worry about that. Just pick up this item and then just keep on smoothing. Here. Item in the road we can get fire arrows. It's one of those skulls again, we can grab that bad boy. Now as you see over here, there's a nice little grave site. Pretty much when you get to a grave site. Oh real quick, there are little explodey boys here that will blow up. Just be careful of those. Pretty much. Don't worry about the goats either, they don't hurt that bad. But pretty much we're gonna loot all these grave sites. If the game would allow me. There we go. Might want to get off your horse for this one. Pretty much you just have to face an item really to pick it up. Sometimes if it's on an elevated it might be a little it might be a little troublesome. all those we're going to make our way down here to the left I can't find my map right now let me get a range of some things so I believe it's over here we're gonna run to our left okay sorry where our second beacon is so run past that little pond we are going to aggro one of these trolls. And this statue right here, we're just going to stand behind. And we're going to run away. He's going to smash it. And we're just going to run through. We're going to pick up those smithing stones. And we are going to go back in this direction. I believe there's a shack right here. We're gonna grab this grace. I'm sure we're just gonna rest here just to diagro the trolls. Just in case. They shouldn't push past, but you never know. We're gonna exhaust the dialogue of this guy. Are you here does your despite the you will sell Ashes of War, just yes, say your faith holds firm, exhaust this dialogue. Now's the time. And then, yeah, he just sells a whole bunch of Ashes of War. These Ashes of War you can put on weapons. It can change the affinity of some things. And also, it's going to allow you to do special moves in order to um, improve your gameplay. 
One nice thing too is the Ash of the War parry. It's a pretty nice Ash of War. Just put on any shield you want, especially if it doesn't come with a skill on it. Not every shield can intrinsically uh, parry, so this is nice to pick up. Um, and yeah, the only thing worth noting right now without getting into too much detail. But this is over here at the War Master Shack. Uh, from here, I don't think we actually need to go down here. Yeah, because we're going to go now, here, and here. And then we're actually going to pick up a weapon right here. So we're actually going to go behind the shack. We're going to jump up on this cliff. Going to run across and then down. And then there's a whole bunch of enemies in this camp. So pretty much just pick up this item right here. Bam. Salted flesh. That's going to increase your damage for a temporary amount of time. I'm going to run down this path here. You will see that we can keep going down, but then there's a path to the right. We're just going to talk to an NPC real quick. Can you hear me? Help me. I'm going to talk oh, to this big I jar that's these. stuck. Help him out. Just give and I'll pop. Don't dally. Give it your all, I then from here, I'm just going to do a big charge attack. And then we're going to get him out. We get an email. Talk to you, he'll thank you. Then he'll give you some more exalted flesh. Face off his dialogue. And he says he's just going to Red Main Castle, where he heard there was a festival. And that is important later down the line. We're gonna go back down this path and we're gonna grab this grace. And then from here, we're going to go into our first catacomb where we're not gonna fight anything. We are just going to pick ourselves up another katana. It's actually the katana that we start with. So that way we can do wield bleeding katanas. And just to show you guys real quick, we have the Uchi katana. And it says, you see at the bottom in the middle section right there, it says passive effects causes blood loss build up 45. We're actually going to get another one of these bad boys, put it on our shield slot. So that way we can have two katanas. And this is going to be a very nice little power spike for us, especially when we start upgrading weapons going to be very very strong especially in this early game I hit this gray site just show you guys real quick where I am on the map we're right here right here now from here we are going to run and pretty much not attack anything there's going to be a whole bunch of skellies that spawn. Don't even worry about these. I'm just going to haul ass. And if you do die in here, don't even worry. You'll just respawn at that gray site. It's not a big deal. While you are running through here, you'll see these little plants. Make sure you pick up these glaive grove warts. Get this item as well. And we are going to pull this lever right here under the statue. Then we are going to run out of this bad boy. Oh, I was wondering why I couldn't dodge roll. Forgot if you get a prompt. You have to click the interact. So pretty much what we're going to do is go all the way back to the gray site. All these skeletons are chasing you, and we're going to lay down at it again. So that way it de all these bad boys. So sit down at it, exit it. Gonna reset all the skeletons. We are going to run back. So as you see, this door was closed before. This will lead to a boss room. We're not going to fight that yet. We'll do that later. We are going to come down here. And there is a door right here. We're going to shoot through there. Pick up this grave glove war. 
Then there's a door right here. And there's an item right here. That's gonna be the Uchi Katana. Go pick up this other one. We're just gonna jump down and run across. You can go back the way you came if you want, but we're just gonna jump down and go up these stairs. And all the way back. There's a very small catacomb, so if you get lost, don't worry. It's not the most complicated of, of places. Just make sure you run back out. Uh, you don't have to rest here. The skeletons won't follow you past the door. So, it's not the biggest deal. So, I just get back on our horse. We're going to come back down onto the main road. And then from here, from this gray site, we are going to run across this bridge. Run past little pumpkin boy here. Pick up the smithing stone on the bridge. There is another merchant over here to our right. Purchase. So now whenever you come across a merchant, generally they'll have smithing stones. Um, we're gonna remember this guy. We're going to buy what he has. I must apologize. I, 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 I'm afraid of very little to offer. Yes, yeah, so like I was saying, we are going to we'll just buy that one spinning stone. You don't have to. Um, we can always come back to him later. But those smoothing stone ones are going to be very important because we do need 24 of them, I believe. Heed my the village here and worse if you bow. It's gonna be a guy that we're gonna meet in the round table hold. You can talk to him, you don't have to though. But for story purposes, if you wanna go through and just talk to the NPCs, feel free, feel welcome to either talk to or skip. It's going to be another gray site as well. Now from here. We are going to see a guy in a boat that is a mariner. He will drop a death through and also some ashes. We're actually not going to fight him right now because it's pretty much the beginning right now. We're just going to be running around and finding a whole bunch of things. We're pretty much just running a route to get you guys situated to start playing the game. We're going to hug this right side through these ruins. You'll see these turtles. Then you'll see a stone imp statue. And we're going to use our first stone sword key. So drop this fog wall. You're going to run down. Don't worry, down here there's no enemies. So there's just going to be a whole bunch of turtles. I'm going to open this door right here. And we are going to get our first talisman. Green turtle talisman. Then we're going to go to our equipment. Go down to our talisman slot. We're going to equip this bad boy, and this bad boy is going to raise stamina recovery speed. Very nice, very convenient. That's going to be our first talisman. <clears throat> and then... From here... We are going to make our way to the first church... Um, no, actually, let's go up here real quick, and then we'll backtrack. Even though there is a grace right there, and eh, now we'll just we'll just go up here real quick. It's worth it. This is kind of out of the way over here, anyways. I want to run back up here after we kill the mariner in our later game session. So we are going to run up here, and you'll see. A little building. We're just gonna jump up on these rocks. There is an invader over here, so don't go through the front. Just hug this left side, go in through the side entrance, and grab this grace. Do not go in through the front entrance. We're gonna grab a cookbook and a missionary cookbook. So we're 
we're going to jump out the next side and we're going to go farther up the road towards our beacon. We'll grab this thing right here real quick. Run past those dogs, jump over this wall. Ooh, excuse me. You guys didn't hear that. All right, and then we are going to grab this grace. Now, from this grace site, let me delete this real quick. We're actually going to go get a, a weapon real fast. This is a nice starting strength weapon um, if you just want to do pure strength. Um, just grab this material real fast. And like I was saying earlier, guys, um, this is... We're pretty much just running a route, just getting you guys a whole bunch of stuff or whatever build you want to do. I'm specifically doing a katana build, but this is just for the general, general stuff. Um, so that way people play with really whatever they like if they're watching this game through. So pretty much there's going to be a caravan right here off this cliff. There's going to be dogs guarding this. So we're pretty much just going to spam this bad boy. Oh, we might die here. All right, we died here, but we got the great sword. So we're just gonna open that chest and hopefully get the great sword right away. Um, we're just gonna go back to the last side of Grace visited. Not a big deal. We don't have any ruins, so we really don't lose anything. As long as you pick up the item, you're not gonna lose anything in your inventory. The only thing that you're gonna lose is souls or the runes that you gain, whatever you call it. I'm either gonna call them souls or runes or the same thing. I'm just, I'm just used to calling them souls. So, um, pretty much when you die, you're gonna go back to the last grave site visited. This emblem on your map or your souls that you're gonna are going to have ugh, that you dropped if you died. Um, but we're not gonna go back and grab them. We are gonna go down here. So pretty much we're gonna go towards, you know, we're just gonna fast travel back. Summon Water Village. Go back to the right side of this room. You can see our beacon right there. We are going to find ourselves a nice little route down this map, down this cliffside. Uh, those are beetles. If you kill those beetles, depending on what color they are, they're going to drop you a specific thing. If they're red, they'll drop you health pots. If they're blue, mana pots. And there, I think there's white and gold as well. Some will be Ashes of War. Some will be Incantations. Yeah, that is what the colors of the beetles mean. The little dung beetles. So just go around these, pick up all this stuff. Make sure I didn't miss anything real quick. Looking good. I believe we can go over here to the right and jump down. Yes, okay, so there is actually a thing right here. Now, you do take fall damage in this game, um, so it's very important to kind of eyeball exactly um the distance that you can fall to survive but if you come across these little wind tunnels or these wind pillars you can actually jump into them no matter the distance and you will fall safely not take any damage kill this dunk right here that's going to give us ash of war sacred blade very nice for killing undead and skeletons. I guess they're the same thing, but you know what I'm saying. They're pretty much just going to be, it's going to be super effective against them. We're going to come down here to this church. Grab this grave site, just to show you where I'm on the map real quick. Right here at this church. Grab this grave site. Pretty much whenever you come across a church, there'll usually be a statue like this. And then underneath the statue, there's usually an item. 
and that item is usually a sacred tier. And if you remember what we were explaining earlier, the sacred tier is going to the, increase the potency of our flask. And also, we just picked up a Physic, a Wonders Physic, which is going to be pretty much a customizable potion. It seems torrent. That will allow us to do some really fun stuff. I will explain later. All right, so then you're going to get visited by our little waifu here. Uh, she's pretty much going to say, you want to go to the round table? Very just say well. you'll go. Let my hand rest upon you. And yeah, guys, um, so from here, now that we're at round table hold, I'll take you guys through it. I'm actually just going to quit my, my dual Uchi Katana real quick. Very fun. Um, take you guys around the round table hold real quick. So to the left of the fireplace, you're going to find our guy that's going to upgrade our weapons. So if you go to him, you can see see smithing stone uh one says two this is what in parentheses is going to be what's in our inventory but it's going to be two to upgrade it one time and over here you'll see you'll see exactly what the one upgrade would do and if it changes our attribute scaling at all not gonna spend too much time on that I'm just gonna run out of here. I'm just gonna show you the general stuff. Um, if you, right when you run out, if you just take the door to the right, we're going to go to the bell bearing twins. Pretty much any bell bearings that you get in the game, you're going to bring here. Um, it's going to give them a larger loot pool for you to buy. Um, from here, Notable things to mention, they have a memory stone, which increases memory slots, and all a memory slot is, is a spell slot. Uh, we'll, th we'll find these throughout the world as well to increase uh, you know, your, <coughs> your threshold of spells. So you can be more versatile, a little bit more deadly. She also sells, sells stone sword keys. Something that we're gonna pick up a little bit later is gonna be a finger seal. We're not gonna get this right now though. Um, this allows us to cast incantations. You have to be holding a seal in one hand in order to actually cast an incantation. Just like with sorceries, you have to be holding a staff in your hand in order to cast it. All right. And then we're going to back out of there. And then I think that is the last thing I wanted to show you guys. Um, yeah, because she's not here right now. Oh, let me actually see something real quick before we end this playthrough. Let's go back to Stormhill Shack or walk through rather. Oh, we're gonna go back here. She's still here. Pleasure to see. Did you give that I love? Did you give that I love? Okay, I forget exactly when she goes to. The, the round table. I think we have to do something around here first. I think we kill Margaret the Fell. Yeah. I think we have to kill that boss first and then she'll be gone from here. She'll drop an item as well. Um, so very important. Uh, real quick, because we have... A seed and a tear. We're going to go to our flask. This is actually the last thing we'll do before we close out this playthrough. We'll add a charge to our flask, use one golden seed, add a charge. I don't know if we have another one. No, okay. So we have one more charge of our flask, and we'll increase the amount replenish. Use a sacred tier to increase the amount replenish. Just increase the amount. Yeah, then we only have one. Okay, so now we have one more charge. So now you can see we have five flasks, and when we back out, you will see it says flask of crimson tears plus one so it is upgraded plus one in terms of its potency the amount that it gives us back of the resource of the flask 
And now, as for the Fisic, when you click on it, there'll be two slots empty up here at the top left. You click on one of those slots, it'll bring you down here to this menu. Anything that you get a special, uh, special mix or tier rather for the Fisic that can be combined. You combine, you can combine any of the two. Um, right now that we have restores half the total HP in the mix Fisic, so this will just no matter how much health you have, it will restore exactly half. Um, of your total HP, not not like if you're missing a little bit and you take it, it's not going to restore half of what's missing, your total HP. So we'll do that, and then temporarily boost strength missed in Fike Sick. Um, we're not doing a strength build, so this doesn't really matter, but we're just going to click on it because it's better than nothing. And yeah, we also we will, we will revisit that. And that's going to be it for the first episode of the playthrough. We went, a, we went around, we got some stuff. Um, in the second episode, we are going to, real quick, let me see, we're going to pretty much be going through Limgrave and grabbing more merchants, um, pretty much picking up more bonfires so that way we can fast travel different places. We're going to get a ton of ruins right off the rip so that way we can upgrade our weapons. And we're going to pick up some more um, stuff for people that want to be like casters. Uh, for instance, we're going to get a staff that's really strong, a spell that's really strong with it. Um, some other fun stuff like armor. And then, yeah. So that's going to be it for this playthrough. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helps. And catch you next one. Peace.